I do love a pole. Yeah, I love a good table. Yeah, I, I love, yeah, yeah. A graph. Jeez, this podcast is taking a turn. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to the Deep Drop. It's exciting, Ads. I'm up and about tonight. I'm feeling good about tonight's episode. It's been a good week of weather, which is nice. I'm feeling better after I felt like shit for the last couple of weeks. Everything's just, everything's on the up, mate. It's great to see you, Adam Ring. I'm Luke McCredden. Welcome to what is a fishing podcast that is a little bit different, Ads. I'm going to throw straight to you because you tend to make a bit more sense of what the hell this podcast is all about. Well, little, it is a little bit different to that which you'd normally listen to in a fishing podcast because we specialise in asking questions, Luke. Now, we give our very best effort through conversation and throwing ideas at each other on how to pick apart these questions and come up with a baseline answer. But that's not where it ends. We lean on massively our very loyal audience that are getting involved more and more each week, and it's brilliant because... We don't mind throwing out the ideas, but we don't know the answers. We, we can have a rough idea. We can hash it out. We can throw all sorts of silly, smart, educated, yep. dumb, all sorts of different takes on any given question. Mm. But what we really specialize in is taking in the information from our listeners and then coming up with the last piece or pieces of the puzzle that we paint during our actual podcast, Luke. So, listen, it was a wordy answer. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll take that on the chin. No, but, but it's I an think interesting I, podcast. I think I think that summarises. But I, I, you know, I, I guess the best way to find out what this is all about is probably just to stay, stick around, just just listen, yeah. just tune in, um, and you'll you'll get that you'll get the gist of it. it. You might be scratching your head at the end of it. But that's okay too. <laughs> we we quite often are. We sometimes do too. You're quite right, though, Ads, and we we rely heavily on uh, you guys, the listeners, and people out there in Instagram land in particular and and social platforms across the, you know, even Spotify ads, you can now get involved in the show. And we often ask the questions, in fact, we always ask the questions that we try and tackle and get your feedback and answers and thoughts on it because quite often, uh, you know, you make more sense than we do. But more importantly, we just love to hear what you've got to say about it now. Last week was a great example, Ads. We asked a couple of really good questions that we dove into, you know, a, a, a whirlwind of, uh, I suppose, discovery about what we thought were the coolest looking fish in Australia. Now, I knew this one would be a bit of a, uh, you know, a bit of a bit of a interesting one to put out there, and so I thought, well, let's, you know, let's let's find out because we might have missed some. We we came up with what we thought was pretty solid as as a three as a starting base. We said dolphin fish, we said brown trout, and we said a striped marlin. I thought that's a solid start. And we put it out there, and there were some answers, ads, that, that I was even surprised at, but went, can't argue with it. So do you mind, can, okay. can I just no, go read through them some out. of I'm them? interested, I'm interested. There's one that uh, is reoccurring throughout, Ooh. you know, the, the posts and, and, and comments, and that was uh, the butterfly gurnet. N- nice. Now... When you talk about cool looking fish, hundred percent, they're an unbelievable looking fish. Yeah, you Both know what? They're weird and because they're beautifully coloured. Yeah, because yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, well, speaking of weird, there was another one, stargazer. Oh yeah, okay. Maori I... Maori ras. Oh yeah, okay. There's a theme running here, Luke. What? We need to do another list. What's the What's the new list? The fugly list. <laughs> Yeah, well, this this comment from Purple Patch Fishing probably uh, is might top that list. Elephant fish. <laughs> <laughs> We're definitely doing a fugly list. <laughs> uh, Luke's gone fishing has just put together a, his top five, which is awesome: Maori wrasse, coral trout, dolphin fish, butterfly gurnet, and redfin. Redfin. Now I, I knew that would get you up and about. <sighs> wow! Look at I... you. Look at you. You've never did been more come, up and did, about. Did we just come up with number four? <laughs> <laughs> Can't argue. It's a cool looking fish. There's no doubt about that. Mahi Mahi Black GT was mentioned. Uh, ah, Redfin yeah. Pert. There you go. Redfin gets Great. mentioned again. Um, tiger Trout. Ooh, good one. Not bad. Definitely not as good as Brown Trout. Not as a Brown, no. Um, 
butterfly gurnard again. Yep. Fly. So well, all right. So I think butterfly gurnard's got to slot in. I think it to has that to. fourth spot. It yeah. has to. It's, and then did yep. no bullshit. Did Redfin make the top five? I don't. I don't know how. I don't know how I feel. I mean, <laughs> me either. To be honest, the putting... butterfly gurnard I'm happy with. I'm 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 okay with butterfly gurnard going in to one of those spare two spots. All right, so if we were to... And look, we're not getting back into the list chat, but if we, we're, we're talking about... I mean, but we kind of have to because we, we called it out that said that you guys are going to finish the list. Read it list. out. Do it. Do it, Luke. And the red fin gets mentioned a few times. There's even a couple of messages with a picture of a red fin. Do it. Read it out. Top five. Go. Put it to bed. In no particular order. Dolphin fish. Butterfly gurnard. Brown trout. Striped marlin. And Redfin. <laughs> Redfin for the win. It's there. It's there. <laughs> so good. It's there. I'm not... Uh, and we're going to... I'm going to post that top five. Yep. Just the way it stands. And, hey, this... You know, you can still give us your thoughts and feedback on it, but that's where we've landed. That's the five. We put Just it saying. out there. If you didn't make a comment and you don't agree with it, you should have fucking commented. Exactly. <laughs> Stay out of it. <laughs> no, but... Okay. Wow. I there did, we go. It's not where I thought we'd end up. No, but I, I, I think I feel pretty good about it. I, look, I'm going to just finish this here, right? We asked for the last two spots of the top five. You guys delivered. We're locking that. That's it. But I, but I just want to just go back and say we're picking Redfin over Coral Trout. It's it's not bad. Like it's, I kind of okay get it. With it. Yeah, no, I'm okay with it too. I get it. Yellowfin Tuna. Again, I kind of get again, it. Again, I don't hate it. Mako Shark. Yeah, it's, again. Yeah, it's up there. Oh, okay. All right. All right. I mean, no, no, there. I'm okay with it. All I'm right. okay with it. Lock it in. Far out. Lock it in. That's so, the five. Well, firstly, thank you and well done to everyone who got involved in that. I mean, that's a top five that I didn't think would look like that when we started last week. But it's a, so- it's a solid five. It's, it's a, a solid, solid five. five. And I'm pumped to do the next top five. Don't know what that looks like yet? It will... We'll work on it. But there you go. I mean, wow. <laughs> That's oh, so man. good. That's solid. All right, well, we'll leave that there. Um, we did also ask what's changed most since you were a kid, which was cool. Um, some cool feedback there too. Uh, technology popped up a few yeah. times, obviously. Um, uh, the resurgence of some of the fish, so native fish and so forth. Um, mono to braid, glass to graphite, etc. cetera. Um, and, and there was a comment that I thought, yeah, this is not bad. Spool spinner, in fact, all the comments were good, great. Spool spinner fishing said it has to be the quality of the kids' combos. The little four foot fiberglass kids' combos now are robust and have a reel with functioning drag and proper line roller. And I'm like, that's not a bad point. Fair point. (laughs) That's not a bad point. Um, All of a sudden, without being, you know, it's not ridiculously, you know, technologically advanced or anything, but it's a legitimate, just better functional rod and reel. It's a fair point, actually. It's not just the it's not just the old thirty dollar plastic thing where you know the reel might last half a session, and you know a, a guide probably comes with a missing ceramic as part of yeah. the pack. <laughs> um, <laughs> we have come a long way. Um, two other comments I just want to touch on: James Beefer, one hundred percent. It's just the sheer range and quality of tackle available, particularly lures That's a great one. and plastics. Now. Just, uh, I just want to shout out James Beefer. Last week I mentioned that I used to uh, perhaps take some time off school. Yep. Uh, yes. Early days or, or, or it's in, you know, sometimes on weekends where we just disappear for a day, spent lots of time at Aussie Angler in Greensboro. Now, James, who commented, was uh, one of my counterparts. Yeah, he nice. I, so he and I used to do that. He was a more regular at Aussie Angler than even I was. So uh, shout out, Beefer. Um, Awesome to see you commenting, mate. But yeah, I mean, we go back to where soft plastics were barely a thing, and there yep. certainly wasn't the range. So to hear you talking about the the uh, the range and quality of tackle and lures in particular, I love that because it's just so accurate. Uh, and then and then finally, access to the info, like where to fish, when to fish, and how to fish effectively, and all that sort of stuff, which that is exactly what we touched thing. on. And that could yeah. that could actually be the biggest thing. And as we sort of said last week, you know the. Uh, the grassroots fishing when we were kids was very much just going out, getting your hands dirty and talking to as many people as you can, which was great. 
but now you kind of don't even have to. And that yeah, was con- where we sort of landed last week. But awesome comments, awesome feedback. Thank you so much, everyone, uh, for getting involved online. Love every second of it. And, uh, yeah, I can't wait for more. I, th- it's probably my favorite thing about this podcast ads. I'm not going to lie. I love hearing from everyone. It, it's, yeah, it makes it pretty fun. Well, speaking of that, Luke, I've come across something during the week that I think we're going to hear from. Once we put it out there and we're going to break it down, there's a little bit to go through. And I think socials are going to light up because I stumbled across something really interesting. Now, Steve Starlow, listen, I mentioned Steve Starling a lot on this pod because I do follow him on socials and I think he genuinely just puts out some of the most interesting shit that you're going to read about fishing Mm. online. So that's where I found this. Right. Now, the New South Wales Fisheries conducted a survey, a very interesting survey. So without exact numbers we're looking from what i can understand and uh this was straight off starlow's post roughly a thousand fishos across the course of a year so they were surveyed right on what they're catching and also if they're releasing them or not and what we've got is a table of the top 10 in both salt water and fresh water the top 10 most commonly caught species and the rate at which they're released. And this is for New South Wales? This is for New South Wales. So it's not not a Victorian thing. So, so Luke, you and I from, from Victoria, Yeah. this is a New South Wales thing. Yeah. I would love to see a Victorian version because I think there would be some similarities and I also think there'd be some differences. But when I had a look at this, I was excited. I was interested. I could sometimes smell the the sweet smell of bullshit in the air on some of it. <laughs> we'll get into that. But there's there's also I think a couple of reasons on why this potential bullshit may be in there. But I'm just going to quickly to start, Luke. Before we pick it out, I'm going to just read you the top tens okay. of both the salt water and the fresh water. Okay, so, let's, start, let's start into the salt. In the salt, so the top ten caught species over the course of a year by roughly about a 1,000 fishos is brim, and it's not even close as number one. Right. From brim to dusky flathead at two. Yep. Snapper, sand whiting, yellowtail scad, <laughs> tailor, yep. sand flathead, okay. mullet, in at number nine, blue mackerel, Okay. which I'm pretty sure is a slimy mackerel. Right. Uh, and then in at number 10, the good old Australian salmon. Mm. I, I sense a bit of uh, uh, something interesting in your voice when you hit number five, which was the yellowtail scad. Mm. <laughs> talk, talk to me about how you feel about that. So I have a couple of questions. <laughs> okay. So okay. yellowtail scad. Listen, I can see how it would be a species that's caught often because especially on some of those New South Wales jetties with a little bit of burley, you can probably catch as many of them as you like. Mm. But so roughly over the course of this survey, to just over 217,000 yellowtail scad caught with a release rate of 40%. If it's got a hook in it and released, <laughs> does that count does that count? as released? Well, my question to that was, who are the 40% releasing them? Kids, I reckon. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, as so, in what they're getting them out of the live well and throwing them overboard? Is well, that what you're I, well, see, this is where, this is where I'm not, not entirely sure what... I, I could only assume that this was a vast array of fish shows from land-based yeah. to boats. And obviously, New South Wales has a, a thriving game fishery, so yellowtail scad. I... I would love to know what the basis of the survey was because, Luke, if you were conducting a survey mm. and you just wanted to know what's everyone catching, yeah, would you give a rat's ass if they were catching yellowtail scat? And would you go, mm, it's a bait fish, doesn't count? Yeah, I wouldn't count it. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> so. 
But <laughs> it, it's but it's a, a fin fish survey and it's a fishery survey and they're very official. And by the way, New South Welshmen and women, uh, please get in touch uh, while you're listening to this. Flick us a message or whatever you need to do because... Well, let us know how you went on your last SCAD session. I'm yeah. <laughs> keen... <laughs> I'm right. keen to know... The bu- your bullshit radar has probably gone off at number five in the saltwater fin fish caught and released. And please tell me that I'm a dumbass Victorian because in Vic, the only time we see yellowtail scad, realistically, is, again, if we put a burly pot down near a jetty, you might get some, or they're the kind of one that all of the yellowtail kingfish fishers catch and go, no, oh, it's okay, but it's not as good as a slimy. So yeah. it's... Still use it. Yeah, you, it's a just in case bait. So it's not even the number one bait, let yeah. alone top five in the or, top five in the top ten most caught fish. Or it gets vac, vac sealed for snapper or gummy bait. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. So right. okay, that was one that struck me as a little bit weird. Um, mm. The rest of them, I don't really, I don't really have too much of an issue with blue but, mackerel. I mean, sl- slimies, if we're calling them slimies, blue mackerel, they're in the same boat. Same, right? yeah. same. But at number nine, like, you know, how many other... What what fish do you think's getting bumped to 11 because of slimy mackerel's in there? There's a big um, discrepancy between tailor and salmon there, isn't it? Now, I'm not, not, I'm not suggesting it's wrong, but I'm just... I, I, that piques my curiosity. A bit. That's I, a, that's yeah, it's a fair point. So just for for reference, Taylor in at number six over the course of twelve months, just under two hundred and fifteen thousand Taylor caught compared mm. to only eighty seven and a half Australian salmon. That is weird. Mm. Now it might be absolutely spot on, but it just jumped out at me. I guess as a yeah, as a as a bit of a difference there, but so yeah, that's okay. About- so that's a that's an interesting one. Is there anything you know, there that's missing for you that you thought would have been there? I know but putting you on the spot, but I, I mean, there's the vi- you know, it's there it's, is actually all the common species uh, are there. No, there's there's one there's one obvious one missing for mine. Mm, what's that? To- toadies. <laughs> they or, are they, actually... or are they a Victorian thing? Oh no, nah, surely they're a global thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, okay, all right, well. Yeah. Well, it, well, it, what sort of game are we playing here? Toadies got to be on there. If they're not counting toadies, but they're, they're counting scad and slimy mackerel. And 100% would be released, right? Yeah, I guess. How they're released, not stipulated. Just it's says not stipulation return back about to the how. water. Doesn't say how. So. Scad are released with a, hook, with a, with a 6 0 <laughs> hook through their back. That's right. But you'd think uh, Toadie would be in there, wouldn't you? Yeah, again, maybe maybe you're right. Maybe it's not a um. Or a maybe rass? it's more here. Yeah, what, I don't what, know. Is I there mean, anything? Is there anything jumping out at you that's missing? No, not particularly. I just think some of the uh, numbers are. I mean, you're talking about uh, and look, brim obviously are a, a, a hugely um, sought after and, and caught species, but it's it's more than double the next in line. Oh, um, it's it's not even it's not even close, really. So, but yeah, again, I, I, I'm not. I'm not a scientist or a statistician, or a, I do love a I do love a poll. Yeah, I love a good table. Yeah, I I love, yeah, yeah, a graph. Yeah, as what's soon your as I saw graph? it, I'm what's like, your top three graphs of all time? <laughs> Jeez, this podcast is taking a turn. For... <laughs> love a pie chart. <laughs> Uh, I, don't, I don't mind this. There's a bit of green and blue. There's pictures. Yeah, no, it's like, it's, gonna, it's all the boxes. We're going to post this uh, image, um, this graphic, so to speak, uh, onto our page. So people can, if you're listening and you want to know what the hell that we're talking about, go on Instagram, the deep drop on Instagram to have a bit of a look. Um, why don't you jump over to the freshwater fish ads? Talk okay, us th- through that. This one, this one is fascinating. At number one, the mighty red fish. Fuck, it's it's all it's it's just coming number up redfin, isn't yep. it today? Number one. You? Now, what's interesting? I've had forty five percent of all of the redfin caught were released. Now he's saying just because they were too small for a fillet, because you tend to catch a lot of small ones when you're ready fishing. Yeah, Are you, I mean, I didn't think they were allowed to release them. Oh, they're not noxious. 
Sorry, I'm just oh, taking this in a different yeah. angle. No, but no, you can. Okay. No, you you can. Which is good. I think, I mean, I think they are. Keep well, I'm not. I'm not sure of the New South Wales regulations, but the Victorian regulations they're technically noxious, but it's one of those ones where like, yeah, they're okay because they look yeah. cool and they taste good. No, I'm um, happy. I'm comfortable with that. I'm so, Reddy's at one. It. Yep. Murray Cod at number two. Mm. Very interesting. Yep. At number three. Okay, so this is where this is where the pungent stench of bullshit starts to circulate <laughs> the room, and Starlo called it too. So it's not just me. Yeah. There was less European carp caught than Murray caught. Yeah, that seems that doesn't seem right, does no. it? No. So so park that. We'll come back and we'll break okay. that down. So the top three: redfin, Murray cod, carp at four, rainbow trout. At five, mm. brown trout. I want to talk about that. Mm-hmm. Golden perch with a enormous drop-off from the Murray Cod. Let's talk about that. Mm. Um, Aussie bass slash estuary perch, which are both combined into the same stats. Which I want to talk about because I don't like it. Interesting. Two different S- fucking fish. So anyway. s- <laughs> That's right. Silver perch in at seven or... Yes, yeah, seven. Eight. Eels at eight and catfish, eel-tailed catfish at ten. So I think there's a few things that are really interesting here, Luke. Yeah. With eels at ten and eels at nine and catfish at ten, they've clearly run out of freshwater species to catch yeah. in New South Wales. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> this is where the freshwater fishing thing for me it tapers off pretty quick, doesn't yes, it? Yes, yeah, that's right. So big drop off towards the end. Uh, yeah. silver perch at nearly 32,000 seems a, pretty a, high, a lot, does it? A lot. It seems excessive for me. Um, and again, that's just my first glimpse at this. It doesn't, I don't, I'm not, we're talking about a thousand anglers. Over the course of 12 months. I mean, you do the maths. But, well, yeah. ma- maybe they're in at seven because they ran out of species. Just say it. Because it's a pretty big drop off, even from perch and bass at six, fifty seven and a half thousand to just under thirty two thousand for silver perch. So I think we can just put it down to they ran out of species. Mm. Um, so there's there's that. Can we address the the bass and perch thing, Luke? Yeah. I know. I know. I saw. For, for those not aware, we record this via a program. We can actually see each other. I saw the first thing you did was look at the camera and scrunch your face up. Per, perch and bass, what are, you, what are you thinking? Well, I mean, for me, you know, they're obviously, they were obviously really struggling for species in this freshwater um, list. They could have easily <laughs> separated those and, and gotten rid of the eel tail catfish. But for me, it's also a very, very different species. Like they're two, okay, they look the same and they're somewhat related or whatever, but I would like to see those stats broken down because I don't think it's, yeah. And you could argue that, I mean, uh, I know perch is, covers a bit of both fresh and salt, but I don't know. I think I think bundling them together, you might as well put, all the perch family in there, gold and silver. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, maybe I'm being red fit. No, nah, maybe nah, I'm but it, big. it's No, nah, it is weird though because I've caught more estuary perch in salt water than I have fresh. Do you know what I think's happened? All, yeah. And I might not know. So people from New South Wales, please correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> do fisheries stock a shitload of estuary perch like they do in Vic? Not sure. Into freshwater impoundments? Yeah, potentially. Yeah, that's probably so, where that comes from. So were they fishing for a pat on the back? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. But I think, and, and regardless of what, you know, uh, salinity you're catching those perch, I actually would like to see those stats broken down. I'm curious because I, I, I'd like to see the ratio of bass caught compared to perch. Yeah, Do you know what nice. I mean? Yeah, I, nice. Would you suggest, and, and again, with the Victorian lens on, estuary perch numbers would be far greater than Australian bass, I would have thought. Yeah, I would have, yeah, the, I would have thought. Well, the second part of that is, for me, that 
that could be the the stench of bullshit is we know that bass fishermen would never talk to someone doing a survey. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> they get back from a bass trip. Did you catch anything? No, nah. no, nah. <laughs> nah. didn't even go. No, nah, it was yeah. tough. <laughs> yeah, but the go- yeah, <laughs> just caught some cod. Maybe that's why the cod numbers are so high. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's a great point. <laughs> I didn't think of that. <laughs> so good. Uh, all right. Well, I, I think there's. I think there's, and I and I think you might have mentioned that Starlo made comment on it too that. There's potentially two fish here that are around the wrong way, the golden perch and the Murray cod. Well, not not so much around the wrong way. My issue is more, how is there essentially three times more Murray cod caught than golden perch? Mm. So do New South Wales have a golden perch problem? Or have the Murray cod just absolutely boomed through stocking, through rain, through uh, what? Do we, uh, do we need I don't a- know. Do, do we need a cull? Is that what you're saying? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> because also interesting, interesting oh. to interesting to know. Ninety five percent of the three hundred and thirty five and a half thousand Murray cod caught were released. Okay, that's still a decent number of that are kept for a feed, and that's yeah, okay. Yeah, but we're dealing in percentages, Luke. So let's not be negative. Okay. Uh, so the vast majority of them, um, because. It it just seems it seems weird. If if you were to do a survey in It's about fifteen or seventeen thousand kept. Yeah, nah, fuck all. <laughs> yeah, sorry, continue. <laughs> so if in Vic, if we were to do the same survey in Vic, mm. which is why this must happen. Okay. Just saying. I'll bring it up at the Yes you will. Do yeah. you th- do you think that Victorian stats of a thousand fishers over the course of one year would show a three to one difference, Murray Cod over Yellow Valley Court. I, I I wouldn't have thought I wouldn't have thought there'd be that big a gap if if a gap at all. Well, do you think there'd be more per, golden perch than Murray Cod? No, sorry, I, I still think Murray Cod would probably yeah, win out. But is it weird that I could kind of if I sort of tilt my head one way and stick my tongue out and close one eye, I could kind of see a scenario at which maybe the disparity would be that much. Mm -hmm. Because you have to think about how many Murray Cod have been stocked. I can only speak for Victoria. I don't know. And not not to mention just how popular Murray Cod fishing has become. That plays a part. So essentially, golden perch, to a large percentage, be caught as bycatch. I get yeah, I guess for sure. Yeah, that's that's fair. That's fair. If you, if you were to do this list now, well, it's it's actually the more I look at it, the more it, yeah, it's it's an interesting list. If you were to do this list now based on um, your thoughts, just just off the, without knowing of these numbers, would redfin? Would you think that would be? Yep. The highest fin fish caught in freshwater, freshwater. in New South Wales and oh, Victoria, and New- I probably would. Victoria, yeah, New South Wales. I don't, I don't really know. I can I only know. go by yeah. this solid information. That's yeah, in and ca- <laughs> and trout, the trout. Well, the trout and brown trout ones. Trout ones interesting, um, because the numbers are, I guess, uh, for the overall scale of things, the numbers are pretty even. One hundred and seventy six and a half thousand rainbows, and just under one hundred and sixty one thousand browns. Oh, I wouldn't have picked that they'd be that close. So in Vic, I reckon heaps more rainbows get caught than browns. But I don't know. Is it just a perception thing? Yeah. That's interesting. Could, because a lot, not sure a lot more that, rainbows um, get stocked into all the residential lakes that I know is hugely popular oh, in Vic. Yeah. They're majority rainbows. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I, it, it's, a, it's, a good, it's a good point. I would have thought... More browns, uh, you know, for those fishing the, the river systems. The and wild fish. Through century. Yeah. No, I, look, I'm comfortable with that being fairly even because there's horses for courses. There's, like you say, the empowerment or, you know, the dams and lakes and whatever. Um, so what, it, what about the stats on the two trout species? 
Mm. The release rates, 84% of rainbow trout released, whereas 92% of brown trout. Do, so do rainbows eat better? Are they better to eat? I don't know. Or, <laughs> or do people have a natural conception that brown trout are maybe not as in the same numbers as rainbows? So that therefore they Try release after more? Them or maybe. Or maybe just because brown trout look better. We've established this not only in last week's pod, but also at the top of this one. Exactly. I think that's probably why. So I think maybe the people have spoken again. Yeah. Um, All right. Well, any, any of this, um, any of this that we've spoken about, if you're from New South Wales or you, or you're not from New South Wales, but you've certainly fish it a lot. Let us know what your thoughts are and and where you think, um, if this, this poll might be a hundred percent accurate and you're comfortable with it, or you think there's some, uh, yeah, there's some, well, what would your theory be on, Less European carp being caught than Murray Cod. Well, I would have thought that I would have thought carp could have been almost at the top. Like, because if so, a little bit of backstory for Vic for me will be when Carpathon 24 gets underway 100% straight to number one, baby. Yeah, and that zero release rate will be solid zero. (laughs) Yes, hard zero. Um, in Vic. For many years now, they've been trying to figure out a way to get the carp numbers under control. Mm. And New South Wales withholding some very valuable information from us Victorians, Luke. Are they on top of their carp issue? Is is, is just shy of 300,000 over the course of 12 months good? Is that a good number? We don't know. Don't know, but I, I'm still not sure if I'd believe in Vic if more Murray Cod were caught than carp. Hmm. No, I'm not sure. Because the the other thing I yeah. thought of on why that might be the case. Yeah. Are Murray Cod or have Murray Cod become a species where more people are targeting them on lures than they are bait? Or have we become so educated as far as what we're doing for Cod, we've ruled out carp as a bycatch? Because if you have a think about yeah, what, what would potentially. you what, what would you list your top three baits for Murray Cod? Cheese. Cheese isn't going to get a carp. No, you wouldn't. Um, you wouldn't think, especially if you're not just using a little cube of cheese. Like if nah. you're using a slab. Yeah. Yep. I don't know prawn, uh, shrimp, shrimp, or whatever. Prawns. They, you know the fresh prawns. <laughs> yabbies, you mean? Yabbies. <laughs> you know like, what I'm trying to say. A calf's not going to eat a big fuck off yabby. Nah. Not often. Nah. And then maybe a bardi grub. It's not going to yeah. eat a big bardi, a, a little one maybe. Uh, yeah. But then to your point, the lure fishery almost cancels them out completely. Y- yeah, exactly. You're only yeah. getting the odd one. Yeah. Yep. That's yeah, the o- that's the only thing I can think of on why carp would be under Murray Cod. Yeah, it's a, it's an interesting looking chart. It's an interesting looking chart, and uh, look, we don't want to completely slam whoever's come up with it, but I think there's a few wobbly moments in this chart. But that's okay. Which which is always going to happen in in yeah. any sort of survey. Mm. There's always going to be a little bit of also how BS. I, I mean I don't mind the the survey. I would like to know how it was distributed and collected, the data was collected and that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, what? Uh, just out of curiosity, um, you know, the t- top saltwater fin fish, if you did that survey tomorrow in Victoria, or, you know, the top, what, what would you think would be the top? I th- would it still be brim? Yeah, I think possibly. It's the people's fish, isn't it? It is. Yeah, it's just the fish that everyone can have a go at. Mm, Very accessible. Catch them as many land based as you can in a boat. Yeah. I don't know about Dusky Flathead number two, though. Do you think Duskies would be number two in Vic? Nah, I don't. Oh, no, I don't think they'd be number two. I think the majority of, if we were real, the majority of Flathead probably get caught are more offshore in the base. Yeah. Mm. Um, obviously, you know, it's a different sort of setup in New South Wales, so there's probably more access and more. there probably are more 
dusky flathead. Um, Snapper would be up there. Snapper would King be up George there. Whiting. I was going to say, King George would replace Sand Whiting. For, like the New South Wales, there's Sand Whiting in at number you, four as in right. King George. Would you reckon over the course of 12 months, there'd be more King George Whiting caught than Snapper in Victoria? Is the survey saying that these are legal fish or just fish? Survey says... I think it's just don't fish. don't know. Because I reckon more... Do you remember pro- Family Feud? Yeah, great show. What a show. Great show. Rob Bruff. <laughs> anyway. Great show. I think Bert Newton did it for a while, didn't he? Oh, Bert did a little bit of everything. Bert, Bert did a bit of every, every one, I was going to say. Oh, maybe. <laughs> every, maybe, I don't know. And that's, you know, that's we're not, we're, we're not, not saying judge. he did. Yeah, not here yeah. to judge. Good on you, Bert. Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah, Snapper or King George Whiting, how, what do you reckon over 12 months would be caught? I still think more, more Snapper only be, Really? Yeah, only because... I'm surprised and, Yeah, me. hear me out though. Okay. I still think Snapper because I think there's... A lot more of those insanely ravenous key ring size pinkies that get caught than what there would those little because a little King George Whiting is even going to find it hard to get its lips around a number six long shank, whereas a little yeah. pinky just finds a way to eat everything all the time. So I think the pinkies yeah, probably keep the snapper alive. Maybe yeah, oh. but having ooh. Ooh, having said that though. No, I'm 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 going to disagree with you there. Ooh, I'm going okay. to say, I think over the course of twelve months, there would be more King George Whiting caught than there are snapper, undersize or oversize. I, that's what I'm saying. Write it down. Put it to the people on socials. That's happening. Okay. What gets caught, you can work it out because that would be too wordy from me. Snapper or King George Whiting? <laughs> how many more are caught? What's caught more? What's yeah, yeah? I'll figure it out. Um, <laughs> yeah. What do you think? Yeah. What do you think, Snapper or King George Whiting? In Victoria, so you know we're including. Well, you know, Snapper will probably spread further, but if you were talking, all right. If you and I'm going to open it up, legal, undersized or oversized. But if you were talking legal fish, surely oh, I think it's King Whiting, George Whiting. Piss it in. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I think it's those little piranha pinkies that keep Snapper in the game as far as sheer numbers in Victoria. Yeah. yeah. I wonder if Toadfish would make the list if it was in Victoria. It would. Piece of piss. Where, how high would it be? Oh, it'd be top five. You think it'd be top five? Without a doubt. Yeah. Without a doubt. Yep. And I also think Australian Salmon would be a lot higher than 10th. Well, Taylor probably yep. wouldn't register. Taylor probably wouldn't register. Mullet. <sighs> Mullet would, I reckon. Probably. And blue mackerel wouldn't register. No. Yellowtail scad. I mean... But what know. But what would you... Re- in Vic, what would you be... So, uh, yeah. if we had to omit a couple, say oh, three, scad, Taylor and blue, blue mackerel, and what do you slimy. reckon goes in? Um, Toadies? Toadfish. Um, leather jacket? I was thinking leathery, but I don't, I don't know. I just, yeah, I don't know. Rass? Rass? Potentially. Um, yeah. Some pretty undesirable fish. <laughs> Garfish? Nah. Maybe. Oh, ma- yeah. Uh, maybe. Tuna? <laughs> Seriously. Imagine tuna made the top 10. Imagine <laughs> Southern Bluefin tuna made the oh, top well, 10 but, in Vic. But look at the numbers, right? Let's just go off the New South Wales numbers. Australian salmon, 87,000. How many bluefin tuna? Surely, surely we're not taking more than no, not, eighty-seven thousand bluefin tuna in a year. I'm not saying we're taking them. I'm saying they're caught, and you know, because there's a lot more catch and release now with those smaller fish. Are they? Oh, that's interesting. I, I'd be really interested to know if there's close to eighty thousand. You know that that eighty thousand sort of. Do you know what I'd love to see? Fuck, toadies could be number one. Yeah. Oh, they could. <laughs> do, you know, do you know what else would be really interesting in the Victorian survey? Mm. What percentage of King George Whiting would get released? Oh. Because realistically, the only time King George Whiting is getting released is if it's undersized. Yeah. And, yeah. I reckon... But even the... 
Yeah, I reckon the snapper release rate of 74% in New South Wales would be... Oh. It seems pretty high. Yeah, it does. It'd be... It'd, it'd be... Yeah. We are a kill and grill fishery here in we Vic, though. We are a kill and grill fishery. I reckon bluefin tuna mightn't be far off 80. You know? Oh, I don't know. Fuck, that's fascinating. Potentially. Last 12 months, you think about it. I mean, it's a it's a harder the, the one. The only thing it's... would just be weight of anglers. There just wouldn't be the anglers. Yeah, and it's and it's a lot more weather dependent and that sort of thing. Where you can go and do these sort of bread and butter type stuff, land based as well plays a part. You know, um, yeah, I think garfish might be in there. Rass, toadfish. Do you reckon in the Australian salmon numbers for the Vic one, mm. they're not counting little ones? Bay trout. Yeah. Yeah, well, eighty-seven. What 000. are they? Eighty-seven. Are they eighty-seven are they and a half thousand can is, seems low compared to everything else in a twelve-month yeah. period. Yeah, I mean, I think about southern New South Wales where there's masses of oh, and, and the last couple of years they've had yeah. unbelievable years. Oh, on. I mean, the, there was that marimbula. The was it the lakes that was Just literally black. swarmed? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, but it's fair that there's not... I mean, snappers... Yeah. Anyway, I mean, I'm not going to land on anything definitive tonight, let's be honest. No, um, and, and overall, I'm not offended by this by this survey and the results that New South Wales have put out. I yeah. actually fucking love it because mm. it's, I love it's awesome stuff. to think about. Yeah. And I want Vic to do one. Well, well should we do one? We came up with a top five coolest looking fish of all time. Yeah, but this um, seems like real data. It's interesting. I think the Vic numbers would be... All right, well, I'll tell you what. <clears throat> We're going to post this one on our um, Instagram page for you guys to have a look at. Tell us what you think, if you haven't seen it yet. Yeah. If, if you're a regular angler in New South Wales or you're a local in New South Wales that feel like you're across this more than we are, please get in touch via message or you can comment on the post or do whatever you need to do. Let us know because ultimately we're just sort of, you know, we're just guessing or, you know, having a, a stab at what that list looks like a little bit unbalanced in some areas, which is fine. But hey. that's, that's always going to happen though. Yeah, always. yeah, sure. I still and think we... the, the only proper fuck up in my opinion is mm. Australian Bass and Estuary Purge being grouped together. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think they've done it because maybe there's there's people that aren't sure aren't sure which one's which, and that's yeah. not even taking the piss. They no, it's just they are. Oh, they they look similar. Quite a like, similar looking fish. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe that's a fair call. I I still would like to see data. I'd yeah be curious to know how many bass are getting caught every year. Hmm. I'd love to see the next ten or five. Yes. What's in that? Jewies. Kingfish, yellowtail kingfish, kingfish would, would wouldn't be, be far away. Nah, surely. you wouldn't think so. In New South Wales, I'm trying to think of what else you come across. I reckon it'd be like. I reckon Mulloway and yellowtail kingfish wouldn't be far off. I'm trying to think of what would, what would overtake them. As in, you think they might be next. Yeah, like I can't because mm. Mulloway just seems like that. You know, they're the unicorn. Like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? But what's hit? Well, uh, do you what do you what do you think would be taken more in a calendar year, Mulloway or striped marlin? Oh, Mulloway. You reckon? In New South Wales? Yeah. Yeah. Do you reckon more? They're they're, pl- they're plentiful in some of those Sydney rivers, man. Yeah, true. And it, they're almost bycatch. Do you think more Mulloway are caught in New South Wales than there are bluefin in Victoria? Oh, Jesus! You're throwing out some stingers. <laughs> nah. Oh, nah, <laughs> it's hard. Don't... It's hard. That's wild. This is where we need some more stats. Yeah. This is what I'm saying. We need the Victorian version of this question. survey done. Because I would love to cross-reference a few because I reckon oh. 
Yeah, yeah, there, yeah. There'd, yeah. Be some, compare. there'd be some really interesting cross matches. Do you know what else is a really interesting thing to think about? What mm. do you think's number eleven on the freshwater list? Two Gudgeon. Two Pong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it might be like River Blackfish. Yeah. Could I be. can't. Oh, what else is? What else is there? How many? How many? Um. Yeah. No. That's it. I don't know. I, don't, I actually don't know what else there is. If they're naming eels and eel-tailed catfish, I mean, Jesus Christ. Atlantic salmon? I'm, I don't know. I'm actually trying to think of what else. Because there's all the little offshoots of trout. But What was the number of the catfish, that last one? 16,300. 16,000. Roach? Is that still, is that Roach still maybe? high? <laughs> is that still high? Um, Macquarie like Perch, or is that just Victoria? No, I don't know. That's a, yeah. I'm just trying. I mean, that would... I'm trying platypus. That's not a fin fish. Can't. <laughs> Doesn't can't, have a fin. Can't be it's got a tail, like paddle tail. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't, don't know. I don't know. I don't think that. I don't. I think that's the entire list of all freshwater species. Do you reckon they count? They're counting roach as carp. Maybe. What even is a roach? It's a carp. Just isn't a it? small shit carp, isn't it? Yeah. Well, just bundle them up together. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, I think. I think they've. They're. They're at a stretch to even get ten. I think they've done well to get ten. So, yeah, so. well, clearly, by eel and eel tailed catfish, they were struggling for yeah. numbers. Yeah. I'm surprised they didn't break down the species of eel. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, I mean, look, there's, it's, a, it's a thought provoker. It's a conversation starter. I love what uh, New South Wales yeah, no, have, have I, I, done. Overall, I'm thrilled with this. I know we took yeah. the piss out a little bits of it, but we'd do the same if it was Vic or Queensland or yeah. South Australia, everywhere. South Australia would be pretty easy, wouldn't it? Well, it's not Snapper. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, that's not fair. I'm sorry. Well, that's, what about ten, not, what about not... Tassie? Do you reckon they'd have ten species? That'd be you, that'd be interesting. But do you man. reckon they'd have ten species in total between saltwater and freshwater? <laughs> <laughs> they'd bundle it together for sure. <laughs> that'd be interesting. It would be interesting. Yeah, it would. Because I reckon you'd be. What would be number one in saltwater in Tassie? It would have to be... Whiting would have to be up there. You or reckon? Brim. Yeah, I reckon Brim. It might be Brim again. Do you reckon Tassie Trumpeter would feature on their list? Or... I don't think it would. I don't, I don't I, know. I wonder it where would. it... Because I don't know. Well, what would though? I mean, like without taking the piss, like there's obviously there'd be flathead, you know, brim. King George Whiting, flathead, brim, snapper. So I don't reckon King George Whiting would be that high on the list. You don't reckon? No. Oh, I reckon. Oh. Sea run trout. <laughs> oh, there's one that's silver trevally. Silver. Tre- How is that not a top ten on any list? Silver trevally surely is the New South Wales top ten. It's not in there. But and but disregard the numbers though, right? Disregard the actual numbers. If you were asked the question, what would be caught more in New South Wales, Australian salmon or silver trevally? I'd say Australian salmon. Yeah. But would there be more silver trevally caught than Taylor? Oh, well, clearly know, not. Yeah. Yeah, I know, uh, and Taylor, they're everywhere in New South. So I'd, yeah. I kind of get it. Where would... Silver Trevally sit. That would have to be. I mean, It'd have be so to be. Like, surely yeah, they're thereabouts. rivaling the same numbers as like a slimy so, mackerel or a scat or so something. Do you, do you reckon that then is one of the ones that would come in to replace one of those for Victoria? Yeah, I reckon. Mm. We could. Yeah. Oh, it's so we, good. Yeah, it's great. We, we need a Victorian on. one. We need a Victorian one. Um, let, hey, if you want us to do it, we'll do it. Just let us know. We'll, <laughs> I don't know. We'll find a way. Survey monkey? What? Yeah. I don't know. Um, all right. Well, there's a lot to think about there. Check out the list. See what you think. If you've got any thoughts on it, 
Good or bad, we're not. We're no, not just, no, and, yeah, and we, I, this was not supposed to be a negative stance on it. I was genuinely excited when I saw this pop up on Starlo's yeah. thing because this is fascinating to me. Fascinating. Yeah, I love all this stuff, and you know, you know, we we send each other screenshots of those. You know, when there's a tagged fish, to, you know, going all over the joint, all those sort, all that sort of data is cool. Yeah, it's about, nerdy but cool, but awesome, but awesome. So let us know. Give us your feedback. Tell us what you think about it. I think there's a lot to unpack. Yeah. Um, take it in, chuck a comment in, or send us a message. Do whatever you need to do, and let us know because we'll break. We'll unpack it some more. I think uh, in coming weeks. But hopefully, we see some more of this sort of data and survey. I think it's. I great. love it. I love yeah. it. So yeah. Overall, well done to New South Wales Fisheries. Yeah, well played. Well played. I like Thanks it, and sharing. that's and that's coming from a Victorian. I appreciate the information. And you know what? If it's not 100% accurate ads, it's a start. Oh, you're never going to get it 100% accurate. So no, I'm, I'm happy I'm happy with this. Uh, there... You know why you'll never get it 100% accurate? It's because fishermen are the biggest bullshit artists Correct. of all. I think, you, I think you nailed it with the bass and estuary, fir- <laughs> and estuary perch guys. I honestly think you nailed it. If they're, sitting on, a, it's even if they're sitting on a river and a few fish hoes come back, I'd, you know, how'd you go? Nah, nothing. Yeah. Future Valley. Yeah. <laughs> Taylor yeah, It's just Taylor <laughs> <laughs> Alright Alright well Check it out Let us know your thoughts uh, Keen to hear them Have a great week We will be back really soon See you ads Peace